Right, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I'm Matt Lawrence, as Leslie's introduced, uh, and I'm from Shropshire. Uh, so we've come to talk about the opportunities of recruiting and retaining ringers. Uh, with all the great publicity that's happened over the past uh, past few months and the Ring for the King campaign. Uh, so ringing's changed a lot due to the pandemic uh, and we're not the only pastime exercise that, that is having problems. You speak to anyone in any work of life, uh, we're short of volunteers, we're short of new recruits. Uh, if you talk to anyone who runs a, a Scouts Guides Cubs group, uh, it's some very similar challenges they're facing than we're facing in, in ringing. Uh, the COVID pandemic has really changed things and people seem to have less time uh, or, or want to commit uh, less, to, less to doing things. But there are towers out there, there are Scouts groups out there, Guides groups are doing a sterling job and are creating really vibrant uh, communities of, of, of new people coming in. And these are generally the, the, the folks and people who are trying to do things a bit differently. So I think the sort of key message is we've got to we've got to think again about how we recruit, how we train, how we organize ourselves and uh, start embracing uh, new initiatives uh, to, to keep the exercise uh, vibrant. There's some famous sort of quotes out there about if you keep doing the same things over and over again, uh, don't expect to get anything other than the same results. So if we're struggling to recruit, if we're struggling to, to retain new ringers, we need to do something differently. Uh, if anyone's read uh, about the Central Council's ringing uh, 2030 uh, and making us sort of fit for the future, we need to think about how we lower the average age of, of ringing. How do we attract more younger ringers to the exercise? I know from Shropshire, we're, we're facing our hundredth anniversary uh, in five years time. And if you add everyone by five years, you're starting to get in the vast majority of ringers will be in their, their eighties. We need to do something about that. And we need to do something about that now. And this, uh, this ring for the king is a great opportunity to, to start thinking, start doing that, and then, then uh, build up for, for, for change and, and attracting new generations of, of, of ringers and leaders to the exercise. Uh, so we've had a couple of big campaigns before with the Millennium and, and Ringing Remembers. Uh, we had a bit of time uh, with, with these to, to, to plan. Ring for the King is certainly not going to, to, to have that amount of planning or resources to uh, behind it. Uh, and I think we need to be really clear in the message that uh, uh, recruitment is for life. We want to bring people into the exercise for their for lifelong experience of being a bell ringer. It's not just for the, for the coronation. So if I steal that line for a, the dog isn't for Christmas, uh, ringing is for life, not just for the coronation. So this is very much about how do we attract, keep and develop new ringers, not just a, a one-off to, to ring at some uh, date in May. And I think with with both the, the Millennium and Ringing Remembers and, and Ring for the King, it's really about us seizing initiative. Uh, magic won't happen. New ringers won't parachute. Uh, into into local towers we've got to be on the front foot we've got to be proactive and we've got to to to, to grab people in through the door and give them a really positive uh, experience and, and get them get them hooked in the hobby like uh, like we all have uh, and this is Annie we've <laughs> Annie's mentioned the letter in the times there's been some fantastic coverage both both uh, the bells are really the soundscapes for the for the for the morning of the Queen when the nation came together, the, the sound of, of bells was really vital and really appreciated by communities. And with the celebrations, with the with the coronation coming, uh, we've got a, a window to really sell sell uh, ringing as as positive. But there's article in the Times. Uh, I think someone's always suggested about can we get done by the but by the trades description acts is is bell ringing sexy? But certainly. Uh, Certainly, it was some really good publicity, and uh, we've appeared on "Have I Got News for You" and various TV and uh, radio instances. Uh, so, Vicky's on the on on the the meeting appeared on Radio Four. So, really, some good uh, positive coverage uh, already. Uh, uh, Association of Ringan Teachers uh, two weeks ago uh, have had 160 new inquiries about about bell ringing. 
So this message is, uh, is out there. People are wanting to learn to ring. Uh, we just need to be a bit more on the front foot and as local towers, local groups go out there, not expect uh, someone to do for it. You might get one or two ringers that come from, from national PR and national campaigns, but it's down to us to make it work for, for the local, local, your local area. Some people have already started. Uh, that, that's a, 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 something I stole off, off uh, Facebook on the left uh, down in Devon. Uh, they're already uh, recruiting. A local town uh, near, to, near to me uh, have recruited four ringers from just a simple Facebook page uh, with a ringer for the King logo on and saying, does anyone want to come and give ringing a go? And those four people were... Uh, two were in the 40s and two were in the 50s. So uh, we, we, we initially think perhaps the Ring for the King campaign uh, is going to appeal to the, to the older generation. Uh, but if you get that message right and, and, and uh, uh, get out there, there are people itching to, to, to give Ring in a go. Uh, and I think we've seen that post, post pandemic. Uh, you can get new people in the door and it, it's a great time to, to, to try and recruit. Uh, there's been a bit of work behind the behind the scenes, and if I can get the the tech to work, uh, so uh, there's a there's a web page been produced that I think in the early days of ringing inquiries, people didn't quite know what bell ringing was, and uh, people were sort of slightly aghast to, to find out that they have to go upstairs, and uh, it's 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 not something that you can just go on and press a button and you're a bell ringer. So uh, this has been produced and uh, uh, this will be publicized widely. This is kind of the landing page for, for PR to, to tell people a bit more about the background to ringing and, and to, to do some of that, some of that, uh, some of that eking out of, of those people who might not be interested when they know a bit more uh, uh, about the exercise. So uh, we can circulate this, this, this link, but it, it takes you through a bit more about what bell ringing is and where to go if you're, if you're interested to, to learn to ring. So, uh, so the guys at ART can put people in contact with someone or, 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 or give them, give them some, some training and get them, get them hooked on the exercise. Uh, so yeah, it, it is really then down to, to us to use this initiative. Central Council Art aren't gonna do it for us. We've got to use it ourselves. And I think uh, statistically in, in, in Shropshire, the towers who did well out of the millennium and ringing remembers who those who really really embraced it and went for it those who just expected things to happen didn't get any ringers surprisingly uh, things have changed uh, i won't that uh, this this the things that we used to do to 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 get people into exercise there was a lot of people came from church there were a lot of people who who uh, were 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 uh, sons and daughters uh, of ringers that got them to in, in the exercise. Uh, there's there's limited stats out there, but that those old days have gone. This again is about being on the front front foot and doing all sorts of things to encourage people in through the door. Tower open days uh, seem to be a really good way of 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 recruiting people into the exercise. So it's it's don't don't be passive. We need to be proactive. Uh, get that message out there and talk to as many people as possible, get them through the door, give them a go, give them a positive experience and get them hooked, hooked on, the, on the pastime. Uh, I'm really passionate about retention. Retention is more important than recruitment. To me, recruitment is hard work, but isn't that difficult if you get it right? How do you then uh, get those get those hooks into those new recruits, get them to fall in love with a hobby, get them to be lifelong ringers. And how do you develop, keep them, embrace them, celebrate them, and give them the, the, that sense of community that, that ringing offers us. So uh, say the recruitment's the first bit, we need to think about how we get people through in the door, but then it's the important stuff, retention. That is, is vital importance to the future of ringing. Uh, and the better we do at, at that, the, the, the better the, the, uh, the ringing scene will be. So uh, we have done this talk a few times over lockdown and, and sort of face-to-face. -face. Uh, we've, we've took the uh, art 10-point plan to recruitment and retention. And that's a really good basis for, the, for your plans for your local area. Planning is so, uh, so essential. You need to have a think about what you need to do, how you're going to do it, 
and how you're going to train those new recruits and bring them into the exercise. We need to plan better. Uh, we need to be adaptable and uh, say we need to try new things. So I will pass you now on to Steph, who will go through the 10 point plan uh, in a little bit more detail. Just shout Steph when you need me to move on to the next slide. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Matt said, I'm going to take you through this 10 point plan um, that the ART put together some time ago and is extremely useful. Um, and the very first thing, as the plan, the name suggests, there are 10 things to go through. So number one is raising awareness. Um, so you're, first of all, before you do anything else, your local community around your bells need to know that the bells are actually there and that individual human beings are actually required to ring them, which is obvious to all of us, but is not necessarily obvious to those outside of the church or who've never been in a ringing room. So how many times have you talked to someone about the fact that you ring and they have a no idea that there are bells in the church because they can't hear them because there's such good sound control and there's so much traffic noise, for example. I'm thinking of Edinburgh in particular, but I'm sure it's true of many places. And or B, I thought a machine did it. And there's this sort of confusion between clock chimes and ringing. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had conversations along those lines several times. So first of all, we need to raise awareness in the general community. The bells are there, people are needed to ring them. So as Matt just showed us a, um, a table showing where people come in from, nowadays it's generally not from the church, it's not from the traditional sources of new ringers. So we need to really attract some new people from different audiences. So don't focus so much on the church necessarily, cast your net wider. Um, for example, you could do some leafleting, um, local paper or local magazine articles. They're always desperate for some content. So if you write them something and give them a nice picture into the bargain, they'll probably love you forever. Social media, local Facebook groups, really, really good. Um, if you're not comfortable with Facebook, perhaps there is a youngster around or perhaps not a youngster, actually, but someone maybe slightly longer than you um, who would be happy to do that. Or maybe a youngster who would be doing TikTok or something that youngsters actually do. Uh, if you can have a web page with some key details or direct people to someone else's web page that has some information, like the ones that I've put some links in the chat for. Uh, you could, if you've got time, take part in some community events. So perhaps your village has a local pancake race through the village and you could submit a team of bell ringers to take part in the local pancake race, for example. Uh, word of mouth is very important. And just generally when you're talking about ringing, be enthusiastic and welcoming because that's really what people remember. They'll remember that you love it and that you were enthusiastic about it and that you came across as a really nice person and they would like to find out more. Um, don't try not to feel overwhelmed about all these options. If you've not done anything like this before, just start small, start local, um, just write a, an article for your local paper or your local magazine, or maybe put something on Facebook and just start to raise awareness. Key point is to include contact details. So that slide that Matt showed um, a few minutes ago uh, about Ring for the King, and it said, contact your tower captain. For more information, phone this number, or use this web link. And that's very, very important because people might be interested, but if there's no information about how to follow up that interest, well, you've lost them. Next slide, please, Matt. Okay, number two, before you do anything else, before you start suddenly planning events or anything, first, have a think about your goal rather than your strategy or your tactics. What is it that you actually want to achieve? So how many ringers do you want? Do you need to start a whole new band from scratch? Do you actually have a viable band at the moment or almost viable band and you could just do with a few more? Would you like to have a steady trickle coming in or do you want to have a go at this cohort teaching approach, which is also very uh, positive for the learners? And then following on from that, what do you need to achieve that? Do you actually have anyone nearby who can teach? Do you know? who can teach nearby do you need to find that out from your association or from local towers or maybe you've got plenty of teachers in your tower and that's not a problem but other towers might be asking for them to teach as well um and yeah like i said consider potentially having rather than just one learner by themselves one or two learners have a few at a time if you can manage it because then they all support one another and they don't feel like 
you know, they're taking forever to learn and everyone else is so much better than, than them. Da, 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 da. Next slide, please, Matt. <coughs> um, so now we want to have a think about who to recruit. And as Matt mentioned, you know, we're all, I'm sure, very well aware that the age profile of ringing <laughs> across the country, across the world is, is generally getting older. Um, we need some younger people to come in uh, and take it up as a lifelong hobby. So have a think about um, maybe focusing your recruitment on younger people rather than older people. Um, have a think, now, I didn't have a good look at all the faces on the call, but I wouldn't be surprised if absolutely 100% of the people on the call are white. There is a huge percentage of the population that we are missing out on. There's all that talent out there that we don't engage with because typically we end up engaging with other white people. So have a think about who are the other audiences that we do not usually manage to engage with? How might we engage with them? Um, and then try and tailor your efforts to focus on the types of people that you would like to engage. For example, I went through a phase of trying to uh, recruit amateur musicians on the understanding that they already understand that uh, getting good at something takes practice and dedication. They can count and they can listen, which are all essential skills for ringing. Uh, it wasn't terribly successful, but you might wanna try. Um, next slide, please, Matt. So then after you've done that planning, have a think about what is it you're gonna do? So as Matt mentioned, tower open days can be really successful. Um, and just generally, if you can um, start conversations with people, uh, then that might just be all you need to do. And when you're talking about ringing with other people, you might just say, why don't you come to our practice on Thursday night or whatever, and just see what it's all about and we can give you a go. Uh, so that might be one way to get people in, starting small. Um, you can think about planning how to raise awareness and then consider how maybe depending on how much feedback you get from the community, what kind of event might be valid. So uh, Tower Open Day is possible. You could perhaps give a talk um, to, I don't know, your local WI or a history group or a school group. Um, so again, thinking about your audiences and who you want to attract, who would you want to give a talk to, and then follow that up with a taster session, for example. Um, so you could also do these things online, although as we were all discussing before this started <laughs> just now, I think we all got quite fed up with online stuff. So you might not want to do that. Um, but yeah, various different things to do and no need to reinvent the wheel. People have done all sorts of stuff and put resources online already. And I have a whole page of links to various resources. Uh, so you probably don't need to reinvent the wheel. You probably can just take a plan from someone else and adjust it to your own situation. Next slide, please. Okay, so number five, halfway through. As I've kind of mentioned, you need to use some publicity for your event. Now I do speak from an experience having been involved in a tower open day where literally nobody turned up because no publicity had been done at all. So it's hardly surprising. Um, so do not even think about organizing an event until you've thought about how you're gonna publicize it. And you know, how far in advance do you need to have your event to allow yourself time to do the public publicizing before that. Um, as we've already mentioned, different media are, di are good for different kinds of audiences. So Facebook has a kind of particular age profile. Younger people will use different types of social media. Uh, local radio can be good. Local newspapers can be good. So again, think about how to reach your target audience. In general, the more different things you do, so radio, paper, magazine, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, the more people you will reach. So try and cover as many different bases as you can. Don't feel like you have to do it all yourself. There's probably other people you know who can help out with these things. Maybe someone's particularly good at writing or someone has some nice photos, etc. cetera. Um, in your publicity, do make sure you're clear about what people are signing up for and what you want to get out of this. So it's not just, oh, come and have a look, have a look around the bell tower and go away. No, we are looking to recruit new bell ringers. Come and have a go and see if you would like to have lessons. So be really clear about that. You can also mention that, like Matt said, it's not just ring for the king and go away. This is a lifelong hobby. You want it to become part of your life, you know, part of 
part of your day to day or week to week um, experience. Um, and also important towards the beginning, maybe not in the first event, but towards the beginning of this whole journey for the new recruit is to set the expectations about what you want back from them, i.e. almost certainly you want them to ring for service, at least sometimes, and maybe you also want them to ring for things like weddings as well. So it's not just come along, have a fun time, ring for the king, and that's it. You're expected to, you know, get involved in the community and sort of pay back as well. Um, just general rule of thumb, it's great if you can tie into other national events. Oh, I can't imagine what we might use for that one. Uh, and once again, remember to include the contact details in your publicity. Okay, next one, please, Matt. Um, so successful event, as with absolutely anything, planning is key. As I've already mentioned, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's loads of good stuff out there already. So do have a look at that first and then adapt it for your own local circumstances. Important thing to check, things like health and safety and safeguarding requirements. So for example, if you're having a tower open day, what do you need to make sure that you're in line with all your church's policies and so on? Um, good idea is to try and find someone who's a non-ringer and run your plans past them to see if they think it sounds interesting or you know, if they don't, then what could you do to make it sound more interesting or what would they like to get out of an event if they were gonna take part in it? When you come to the event itself, be professional and be welcoming. Um, make use of all the different people that you have in your band or around your band. You might have some sort of hanger on non ringers who may be really good at baking cakes or um, they're actually very welcoming. So they could stand at the bottom of the stairs and say hi to people as they come in the door and direct them up the stairs or whatever. Uh, top tip, clean your ringing room and the staircase. How many times have we been on tours or you know open days or whatever and there's dead flies crunching under your shoes there's cobwebs everywhere and everything is covered in dust this is not going to attract new ringers please i know we're used to seeing it but you know put the hoover around first really important okay so after you have held your successful event next slide please matt you need to follow up really, really quickly. So whatever it is you did, maybe you just gave a talk somewhere um, or maybe you had a tower open date, make sure you get people's contact details. Are you interested in learning? Write clearly here, check you can read their handwriting before they go away. So, and then follow up as soon as possible, you know, the next day, make it personal. If you can phone them, uh, if you leave it, not very long at all, they will think that you're not interested in them or they'll lose interest themselves because you didn't follow up quickly. So do it as soon as you possibly can. And then even, you know, integrate them into the band as soon as you can. So even if you can't yet give them lessons because the teacher's on holiday or something, then invite them to the pub, involve them in the social events, get them to come up and watch a practice, do something to make them feel part of the band really, really early on. And you might even consider perhaps teaching them some theory or getting them to watch some videos or something online before they start learning in the tower. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. So that takes us on to training. Now, I think Matt already mentioned this, that I'm sure there are plenty of us on this call who had the experience of, well, you get a few minutes, maybe you have one intensive session at the beginning and then you get a few minutes each practice night and it takes forever to make any progress at all. People are gonna get bored and give up. So it's really, really important that we keep our new recruits. As Matt mentioned, getting them in the door in the first place isn't quite so difficult. Keeping them is more challenging. And I'm sure we're all aware of towers where they seem to get a lot of new recruits, but none of them really stay. So have a think about why that is. Is it because they're not really, the learners aren't really made welcome? Um, is it because maybe they don't make quick enough progress when they're being taught? And what can we do about that? Well, intensive training is really important. Um, and if you remember, there have been some talks, I think it was last year, about how we learn. Uh, and one of the key things I took from that is that if you're learning something, you will forget 20% of what you learned within 20 minutes. So as soon as the lesson's finished, 20% has basically gone out of your mind. So it's really important to have frequent intensive training. Um, and also nowadays, new learners, they're generally going to expect some kind of structured training course. Um, so something like the ART, learning the ropes scheme, uh, 
similar to say grades in music or belts in karate or whatever. The other thing to bear in mind from the teaching perspective is that it is going to take 10 to 15 hours of intensive one-on-one -on -one training with new, each new learner before they've basically got the hang of basic belt handling. So really intensive training is a good way to make sure that that happens in a sensible time frame, particularly if you want them to have any kind of go at all uh, for the coronation. Okay, next slide, please, Matt. So as I mentioned, it's really important that we keep our new learners, our new ringers interested and they don't just lose interest and wander off and never come back again. Um, so in advance of having your new learners, have a think about how you're gonna assimilate them into the rest of the band. Um, in fact, quite a few people have said and some research that we've undertaken that Sonia Field has undertaken has shown that outside the tower is probably even more important than inside the tower. So all the social stuff, going to the pub, um, the picnics, the um, quizzes, whatever it is that you do socially as a tower or maybe with other towers or as part of the association or guild is really, really important, not just the ringing in the tower. The other thing to bear in mind is you've done all this intensive training with your learner. They're at the point where they can join the main practice. They're suddenly going to get much less time spent on them in the practice because you also have to, you know, have a practice for the rest of the band as well. So they might feel sort of slightly abandoned or that maybe they're suddenly not making as much progress. And that's a, that's a danger point where you might lose them. So some of the things you could do um, is you could uh, have more targeted sessions on learners. Perhaps you could join up with some local towers and have some special practices just for the learners as well as the normal tower evening practice. Um, and just make sure that your learner is still progressing and they don't just plateau and kind of stall. Social events important, learning rope scheme. If you're using that, then it, the learner can actually see that they're making progress because their achievements are ticked off. You know, so they, they see, oh yes, I did that tonight. I haven't done that before, or I've got better at this. They feel like they're making progress. Um, and that sense of belonging, not just from being in the tower with the band, but doing all the social stuff as well is really, really important for keeping your new ringers and making sure that they are retained and don't just leave. Next slide, please, Matt. So following on for that, final thing is you've got your new learners, you've integrated them to the band, but did you think about the impact all these new learners or even just one or two new learners are going to have on the rest of your band? Your rest of your band, if you're lucky, maybe they ring surprise major every practice night and they don't want to be ringing rounds and call changes because it's boring. Um, so or, or maybe they're just a load of grumpy old men or women for that matter, and they don't like the fact that there's some new blood come into the ringing room. So how are you going to make sure that everyone in the band is still happy when you bring new people in? Um, and it's not really any good putting all this time and effort into training new recruits if then some of your existing established ringers just leave because they don't like the way things have changed. So some things that you could do is you could encourage your more experienced ringers to actually get involved in the planning and the training very, very early on. If they were involved in planning the recruitment campaign, planning the tower open day or whatever event it is you do, planning the training, get involved with the training of the re re new recruits, they will feel invested in those new recruits and more likely to help integrate them into the band. The other thing to bear in mind is, you know, when you're running your practices or whoever's running their practices, make sure that everybody gets something that they want out of that practice. Um, so just supporting the less experienced ringers might not be enough because then the more experienced ringers are sort of feeling like, well, all I've done all night is ring rounds badly. So I'm not getting anything out of this. So maybe something you could do is you could have a monthly advanced practice with some local towers doing more advanced things for the existing ringers. Um, there's some resources online. I'll put some links in the chat after this uh, about helping to, you know, things that can help you plan a good practice. The other thing to bear in mind is well struck rounds and call changes is a fantastic aspiration to have. You know, we don't need to aim necessarily at method ringing. It's nice if we can do it, but it isn't essential. Rounds and call changes struck well are a beautiful sound, and that's a great aspiration to have. So don't feel that you've failed if your learners don't get passed around and call changes. We all know learners who 
you know, perfectly happy and perfectly good around some call changes, but just either don't get methods or just don't want to know. That's fine. Don't push them to do more if that's not what they want to do. It's better to have, you know, people who are happy and ringing within their capabilities and ringing well, particularly if you have a public occasion to ring for, than trying to force people to do things that they don't want to do just because you feel that they should be ringing methods. It's not necessary. Um, and the other thing, finally, to bear in mind, making it work for everyone is don't let your teachers get burnt out. Um, try and share the burden, try and share resources, join together, take turns, make sure people aren't, you know, just doing everything on one person and having having too much to do and not getting a break themselves. And also that they have the opportunity to develop their own ringing. So someone might end up spending a lot of time either planning, teaching or recruitment or actually doing the initial bell handling and doing the initial teaching. And they're not getting to progress their own ringing during that time. That's not a good thing. So try to make sure either for yourself or whoever it is that, you know, who's who's working on these kind of things that say to them, you know, wh what are you doing for you at the moment? What are you looking to progress next? What can we do to help make that happen? Um, so just another aspect of making it work for absolutely everyone. OK, I think I've said everything on that. Matt can correct me, pick up anything I missed. Good stuff. Brilliant job, Steph. Absolutely awesome. Um, I love your voice. <laughs> so soothing. Right. So um, everyone probably knows me already. Sorry for saying it again, but um, I'm Hayley Young from Truro. Hello. And um, I just basically want to sum up with a bit of energy for you all. Can you think of what a dream thing this is just to land on our doorstep right now? Is that we're going to ring for the king? It's amazing, isn't it? Everyone knows my horror when I go to ringing events and I'm the youngest person in the room. It's ridiculous. I'm 41. <laughs> so, you know, now is the opportunity. And I really don't want this opportunity to pass us all by. And it's about grabbing it, taking it in, and really enjoying it because it's a lot of fun actually teaching people in it and um, getting new life into your band is really awesome. So, um, yeah, so basically, everyone knows what works in their own area. You've got to jump on that bandwagon, get the get the resources pulled up off the pages. There's some really good um, JPEGs and stuff uh, just hanging around on these web pages. You can just download them, put them into your publicity campaigns, make the use of them. They're going to be brilliant. Um, you know, the planning is essential on all this, but it's going to look really swish if we're all like doing it in, the you know, kind of like synchronized stuff using the same um, logos and stuff. And they do look really good. So it's impressive. Um, yeah, so take advantage of the PR totally um, and, you know, use what works in your own area. That's really good. And if it doesn't work already, then invent something new. You know, this is the new opportunity we need to try something different, maybe. Um, with events, you know, the uh, events that Steph was talking about, planning events, I've always found these really useful, like loads of template sheets, just to get people to just leave their details. And then you can see all the, the ticks down one side. Just follow them up the next day or over the next week whenever you've got time. Just make sure you've got like loads of people coming in off the off the events that you hold because this starts the most important thing to do with the follow up. Um, yeah, definitely recruitment and retention. Awesome. They have to go hand in hand, don't they? With everything that we do, we've got about thinking about the next step on and how to keep everyone excited and like get them on board and keep them on board. Um, the realistic realistic expectations of this, of course, um, you know. We must be clear that it is quite difficult, isn't it, to learn to ring? Everyone knows that, but we can do this. And even if people are just up to, you know, just ringing backstrokes in rounds in time for the coronation, that's cool. You know, we can assist them in doing that, can't we? It's about the long-term aspirations of this project, really, and getting, you know, having the long-term view about ringing in 2030. You know, what is that going to look like for me? I want some younger people in the room. I'm sure everyone does, um, and more people in the room. I think is the key absolutely more people and we all know how some lapsed ringers maybe that might have happened during when we were ringing for the queen's funeral how they all come out of the woodwork and say yeah yeah i'll come ring in and something you know i'll come ring in muffled you know it's really good people love um, you know they're really proud aren't they to ring for royalty that really works with all age groups so let's make the most of it um, even i mean i i know that some uh, guys down at st kevin if they can't ring full circle, they just chime. You know, if they can't do something safely, they chime as a group and it's making a noise, it's making a sound out of a tower, which is 
brilliant, isn't it? It's raising awareness. They're there, they're doing it, they're using the local resources, they're making it work. So um, yeah, learn to ring. You know, ringing's for life, not just for Christmas, absolutely. New year coming up, isn't it? New year, new hobby. Let's go for that. Anything that's going to work for this makes it work. You know, just it's going to be a winner, isn't it? Um, yeah, just give the publicity voices to your new your newest recruits. I find that works really well. Uh, you know, I get people approaching me from the radio locally and sometimes TV as well. And I just say, you know, get hold of the local, uh, the new, the newest learners across Cornwall. And I say, would you mind talking to the radio? Because they just take it. Um, they take our terms because they don't know our terms of reference yet and they don't know the you know, like complicated terminology. They just, you know, they're perfect for radio because they just describe it in the most straightforward way possible. So, yeah, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, just keep going and uh, just do what you can in your local area. Even a really small thing can make a massive difference. Start small if you need to. If you really want to think big, go massive, do it. We're here to support you. So if you've got any questions after, go for it. Um, you know, now is the opportunity, go for it. Is there another slide? Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know that high quality teaching, we don't need to tell you a lot, do we? It all needs to be there, doesn't it? You've got to have a really strong team, haven't you? And a good rotational uh, basis on which to teach people well. And uh, that's the foundation for lifelong learning in ringing. And uh, none of us would be sat here right now if it if we weren't you know subject to that when we were learning. So I don't need to tell you. Plan ahead, definitely make most of you you know the opportunity we've got. And I would say you know if you've got an area that's maybe not not going so well, you know not they're not ringing at the moment or something. You know we need to get a group of people, key people in in each area just to go for it and plan and get their heads together. I did that during lockdown, a lot of it, and it was, it's paying off right now. It's really good fun. So I can't encourage you enough. Uh, so yeah, collaborate. And yeah, if you're newest rec recruits, just use them. Go for it, people, just go for it. That's all I've got to say, nothing to lose.